On August 23rd, 2024, the world was put on high alert. The World Health Organization declared a mysterious and deadly disease outbreak in the region of the Americas, sending shockwaves across the globe. The virus, once confined to the shadows of history, has re-emerged with a vengeance. First discovered in 1955 on a remote Caribbean island, this lethal virus was initially found in the blood of a feverish young forest worker. Decades later, it has resurfaced with terrifying force, spreading rapidly through Bolivia, Brazil, Colombia, Cuba, and Peru. So far, 8,078 confirmed cases have been reported, including two tragic deaths. The virus's impact goes beyond humans. Brazil has already reported a fetal death, a miscarriage, and four newborns with microcephaly, all linked to this virus. But what makes this virus even more alarming? It's not just a threat to humans, it's a danger to all living beings. Transmitted by biting midges and mosquitoes, it sneaks in natural reservoirs, including sloths, non-human primates, and birds. This outbreak is not just another virus, it's a potential pandemic for the entire planet. What is this mysterious virus? Where did it come from? And why is it causing concern? The virus we are talking about is Oropouche virus. The Oropouche virus is found mainly in the Amazon region of South America and is spread by biting insects. It causes fever in humans, but also affects animals like howler monkeys, marmosets, sloths, and various insects. The virus spreads when an infected insect bites a person or animal. The main insect responsible is a tiny midge called Culicoides paraensis, which is common in many parts of the Americas. However, it can also be spread by other insects, such as the Culex quincafasciatus and Ochlorotatus serratus mosquitoes. If you're finding this information valuable so far, subscribe to keep up with important updates on our channel. The virus does not spread directly from person to person. Once it enters the bloodstream, it can quickly spread throughout the body and can cross into the central nervous system. It tends to build up especially in the brain and liver. The virus is named after the village where it was first identified. In 1955, it was found in the blood of a 24-year-old forest worker who had a fever in the community of Vega de Oropouche in Trinidad and Tobago. Since then, the virus has caused occasional outbreaks in the Brazilian Amazon, with some reaching up to 100,000 cases. Overall, researchers estimate that over 500,000 cases have been diagnosed. Though this number might be underestimated due to misdiagnosis, as the symptoms are similar to those of other fever-causing diseases. Since the late 1980s, outbreaks of the virus have been reported in Panama, Peru, and Ecuador. However, since 2000, more countries have reported cases, including Bolivia, Colombia, Ecuador, and French Guiana. In late 2023, large outbreaks of the virus occurred in the Amazon basin, where it was already common, and spread to new areas in South America. In June 2024, Cuba confirmed cases of the virus. From January 1st to July 20th, 2024, the World Health Organization recorded 8,078 cases of Oropouche. Most cases, 7,284, including two deaths, which were in Brazil. Bolivia reported 356 cases, Peru had 290, and both Colombia and Cuba reported 74 cases each. Public health officials are most concerned about the growing number of cases occurring outside the Amazon region. The virus has now been documented in 10 states outside the Amazon. Recent analysis of the virus behind the latest outbreaks shows that its genetic code has changed, making it replicate more efficiently inside the cells of infected people. This allows the virus to produce much higher numbers of itself after infecting a cell, which could lead to more severe illness in individuals. It also raises the chances of insects picking up the virus when they bite and spreading it further. The virus's ability to hide within immune cells could help it evade the body's defense system. Additionally, 
there are indications that the virus might be more resistant to the immune response of people who have been previously infected with Oropush. Scientists think that expanding urban development into previously forested areas might be contributing to the new outbreaks. They also believe that climate change is creating more habitats for the insects that spread the virus, which could allow it to spread further beyond its usual range in South America. So guys, if you have any question in mind up to this point, do ask in the comment section below. Coming back to the video. In some cases, the infection can lead to more severe symptoms or complications. Oropooch virus causes a flu-like fever in infected people, along with a headache, muscle aches, stiff joints, nausea, chills, sensitivity to light and vomiting. In severe cases, it can cause meningitis. In general, the symptoms are similar to other mosquito-borne diseases like dengue, chikungunya, zika, and malaria. According to the CDC, symptoms typically start 3 to 10 days after being bitten and last for 3 to 6 days. Symptoms can reoccur a few days or weeks later in up to 60% of patients and tend to be similar on relapse. It is not clear what causes these relapses. It could be the same infection re-emerging or people living in areas with a high prevalence of virus-carrying insects being reinfected. The question arises, is there any treatment that is available? And the answer, sadly, is no. Researchers are calling for urgent development of effective vaccines against the virus. Although vaccines are being tested on animals, none are available or proven effective for humans yet. There are no specific treatment for the disease. The Pan American Health Organization recommends rest, fluids, and painkillers for managing symptoms. Brazil's Ministry of Health advises patients to rest, use symptomatic treatment, and have medical monitoring. Infected individuals should also use insect repellents to prevent further spread of the virus. Without vaccines to prevent infections, the best way to protect against Oropush is to avoid getting bitten by midges and mosquitoes. Health authorities recommend using fine mesh nets on doors and windows since the midge carrying the virus is smaller than mosquitoes and standard mosquito nets may be less effective. Wearing long-sleeved clothing and using insect repellents can also help prevent bites. It's crucial for us to understand the symptoms and the history of the Oropush virus so we can protect ourselves and each other. Raising awareness is key, and that's where you come in. If you've made it this far in the video, please share it with your friends and family to spread the word. And if you think we've missed anything important, drop a comment below. We'd love to include your insights in our next video. As always, stay safe and take care.